And thank you for joining us, those who have gathered here in our auditorium to share as a live audience as well. We greatly appreciate it. Thank you so much for wearing your masks and social distancing. We appreciate that as well. Well, are you ready for a great trip? 2021 is an opportunity for us to begin a brand new journey. That's right, get ready to go on a trip. And I don't know about you, when you're ready to go on a trip, well, it begins by packing and thinking of all the things that you're going to take. And maybe the most important question is what I'm willing to leave behind. Now, I can remember packing for my very first opportunity to go on a cruise. And I was thinking, of course, I needed all these kind of things to bring them along with me. And so suitcase after suitcase was packed. And I can remember my partner, Robert, sitting on top of the suitcase as we tried to press it down and lock it. And finally, we realized this is ridiculous. I think the bigger question we have to ask ourselves is not what we're taking, but what we're willing to leave behind. Because I think in life, this is an important question as well as we begin this journey. What, not so much what are we taking with us into 2021 and willing to carry along, but really asking ourselves, what are we willing to leave behind? Because some of those things that we're bringing along, we just don't need and they're not necessary. They're not essential for us and maybe they're just weighing us down. So it's really important we begin by asking ourselves, what am I willing to leave behind in this journey of 2021? Because some things, well, it's just time. It is time. It is the moment here and now to consider leaving them behind. Now, in our spiritual journey, we've packed a lot of things in our baggage. We've carried a lot of things along the journey and many of them have been false. Many of them not true in the journey of our life. We've been taught a lot of things that really don't have spiritual truth to them. Things like we're born into a sinful nature and that we are sinful by our, our very nature, which is in great conflict to the contrast or conflict to the very passage that says we're born and created in the likeness and image of God. Then we are taught that we're unworthy and we think quite often as we embrace this lie that we live a life of unworthiness of God's goodness. Yet we are a child of God created in that image and God's generosity and desire for our prosperity is there and saying you're very worthy of it all. And we live in a world that constantly teaches us there's just not enough. So we believe and hold on to concepts of lack. And we think, you know, there's just not enough to go around and there's not enough for others. And we need to hoard onto our own. And why would we share? And I got mine. They got to figure out their own way to get theirs in this mentality because we simply believe and bought into the lie that there's not enough. We also pay be packed into ourselves the lie that we're separate from one another, that somehow that we live our lives in a world that is not united, that somehow our sector of the planet is far more important or essential than someone else's sector of the planet. Let me tell you, we're all in the same boat. And when you drill a hole in one area of the boat, well, you know what? It impacts the whole boat. So if we just began to realize that idea that we're separate in some way from one another is simply a lie and it's holding us back in our journey of our life. And the idea that some people are more loved than others, that there's certain communities or certain cultures or certain people or people of certain professions that are more loved or God loves them and offers more favor to them than to others. How about the lie that God decides who is eternally punished versus the very truth that our decisions of our own are bringing about our own calamities, our own challenges. And this is again, we've been taught all these conscious, these thoughts in, that invaded into our consciousness, that God is somehow a punishing God, that God acts in ways that are actually unloving. Yet we find scripture saying God is love. Love is what God is. Yet we're taught these ideas that God acts out in ways that don't seem to be very loving and very caring. And we begin to embrace these and we pack them into our bags and we carry them along in our spiritual life. We also have been taught that maybe that God is distant somewhere out there in the universe, somewhere removed from us and is not part of us, or that, that somehow evil has its same power and is in conflict with all that is good. That many times we embody this idea that evil overcomes good and that evil has an equal power and it is overpowering the almighty. Wait a minute, did we not say that God is the all, all, almighty? Yet we believe that somehow 
evil comes into play and evil overtakes good. And so we begin to believe that there are two powers in this world and we begin to embrace those and we sometimes say, you know what, sometimes good loses out. Sometimes good doesn't reign over all things. Sometimes the Almighty doesn't seem very mighty because we believe this lie and we've packed it in for our journey of the spiritual life. We've been taught that living in fear is one of our comfortable places, that, you know, fear is just a normal way of life and that we need to embrace these kind of fears. Be afraid of things, be terrified of things, be worried, be concerned, be stressed because everything out there in the world is something to be suspicious of, something to be cautious of. So we need to always look and walk in some sort of step and life of fear that we think that that becomes our norm. How about the teaching that says that, you know what, you'll never be like God. So we resolve to the idea that why even try? Why try to exude the goodness of God? Why try to be and imitate the very essence of the divine? Because we'll never be it, so why even bother? You see, all these things and many more like this, we've been packing into our spiritual consciousness as we walk through the journey of our life. And we see that these are all lies, for many of them have just been uh, propagated over and over again with misunderstanding. And uh, the fact is that we haven't really embraced searching out the truth. That's right. How do we get to these places where we begin to believe lies and we accept them as truth? It's because we don't go to the source. We don't, you know, we hear a thought, we hear a rumor, we hear an idea, and because we don't check it out, we haven't gone to the source, we just begin to accept and welcome the lies that are offered to us. And we just, well, it sounds good, it must be normal, the preacher said it, this person said it, this teacher said it, the news said it, whatever we say. And so we, we begin to embody these things rather than going to the source. And what is the source? God. That's right. So if we were to really be still and know, I want to tell you this, in the silence, it's when this wonderful essence of truth begins to rise up within our life and we begin to understand what is true and what is not true. It begins to resonate within us because in that stillness, what happens for our spiritual life is suddenly the dots begin to connect. That's right. Suddenly all things begin to come together and begin to make sense. So if we say God is love and is always loving, Yet we've got this idea that God is out to make our lives miserable and punishing and uh, making our lives a journey of suffering. How does that connect? But in the stillness, we begin to understand and realize that what speaks for us is that the love of God is there and desiring our highest and best for us. Then we have this idea that we think God is out to send us to hell and punish us for eternity if we don't do X, Y, and Z. And that sort of idea is then a fear-based religion that we live out that says you need to be afraid of God because God's going to punish you and, and uh, bestow all kinds of suffering upon your life. And that we, in the stillness, we go, wait a minute, is that the true essence of God? The love of God? God being loved, do I, is that something I need to be in terror and fear and stress and worry about? Or do I just rest in the perfect peace that is provided in the comfort of this loving place? We get to these places where we welcome the mistruth, where we welcome and entertain and live from the place of being deceived because we haven't gone to the source in the very first place. So let's begin to pack for the journey of 2021. And let's do this by packing the essentials. And the first essential we wanna pack in our life is understanding truth. That's right, truth. Truth is that which is eternal. It has always been, is now, and always will be. That's how we know what is truth. Now, there is a daily truth, such as you go to a restaurant and the menu says, today we have lobster. Tomorrow you may not, but today it's true, you have lobster. You may come to the restaurant and say, well, wait a minute, you, the menu said you had lobster. That was true for one day. It's not eternal truth, it's just a one day truth. But when we're living from the aspect of eternal truth, we find a big difference here. It's something that always was. It's a truth that says this was true years ago, hundreds of years ago, thousands of years ago. It's true right now, and it will be true tomorrow. That's the eternal truth that we want to live by. And so when we understand that, we understand that we pack that into our life and that's where we begin to live and that's the essential 
that we need to take along for our journey. So let's pack in the very truth then of who you are. That's right, because quite often what's happened is we believe the lies and the deceptions that have given to us because we've forgotten who we are and what we are. That's right, we've forgotten this. We've misplaced this thought in the very journey and so we welcome any kind of ideas that say, you know what, you're less than, not as good as some others, or we welcome the ideas that you're unworthy, we are not loved, or that some are more loved than others, and on goes as we've listed these mistruths, because we've forgotten that we were created in the divine image and the likeness of God. That is our true nature. That is our truth. We are the divine self, the very creation of God and called to reveal God. We listen to the beautiful song that Scott played that says, you are the face of God. That's right, that's exactly who you are. You are the revelation. When we're looking to say, I wanna see God, look to one another and see the wonderful revelation of the divine. We see the very demonstrations of kindness and grace and of love. That's the divine, that is God. We're experiencing now this divine source. We're experiencing it when we begin to look to one another we begin to see the very face of God and understand that. So when we understand that we are the divine, we are the divine expression, we've got to understand that fully and embrace that fully. So say it with me, wherever you may be, it's whisper it to yourself, I am the divine expression. I am the divine expression. We need to make that our mantra for day-to-day -day living because when we begin to move from that truth, that we always have been the divine expression, we are the divine expression, and always will be the divine expression, we begin to understand that's eternal life. Now we understand what eternal life is, that we've all, we're have all we part of this wonderful life that is of God, this very essence that is God, and God always has been, and is, and always will be, and we're part of that. You are the soul that always was. You are the soul that is. You are the soul that always will be for the soul is eternal. We understand that who we are and what we are. We're the divine expression and we are eternal. And when we embrace these things, we begin to understand how to pack truth into our life and how to live truth because we are this truth. You are the true self. And you know what, here's the thing, truth will always align with truth, the truth of you. You, the true self, will always align with truth when you allow that to be rising up within you, this awareness, this consciousness. I am the divine expression. And when we say that, we align ourselves with everything that is of the divine that is true. Truth is love. Truth is grace. Truth is patience. Truth is this wonderful meekness and kindness. Truth is all these gentleness. Truth is this expression that is compassionate. Truth is this wonderful power that's within us that brings to us our great success and prosperity. When we acknowledge I am truth, it aligns with all that is of God, all that is truth of the ages. You simply fall into this wonderful alignment with it. Now, when we're living from this physical world, from this natural world, and not thinking from the spiritual mind, but we're thinking all about the day-to-day -day thoughts of this physical world and all of its limitations, we begin to rise up into a world that this says, I can entertain lies because I'm not living in the realm of truth. I'm living in the realm of limitation. And that alone is a lie. You see, in the physical world, we want, we constantly manifest. There's not enough. There's not enough money to go around. There's not enough food to go around. There's not enough of this or that to go around. We can't afford to care for one another. We can't afford to be compassionate. We need to each look out for ourselves because there's just not enough because we're constantly looking from the physical. And that physical world of limitation is created, is created by us, by our thinking. The more we think that we don't have, the less we have. The more we live in the realm of limitation, the less that we actually have. For scripture even says from the ancient truth teaching us, 
this very truth. For those who have, much more war will be given. And those who don't have will lose what they have. What does that mean? It means when your consciousness is always in a thought process of, I don't have, I can't afford to, this is not possible, I lack, it's not enough, there's not enough to go around. I want to hoard and hold back. What happens is in that essence, that biracial frequency, that way of thinking, it exudes this sort of uh, feeling that says, I just got to hold on to what I have. And you know what? We begin to lose the little we do have. But yet those who say, I have and I'm abundant and I'm willing to share and I believe that there's more yet to come, that there's plenty. I live in a realm of plenty. They begin to express it. They begin to share it. And as we share, the more we share, there's more left over. <laughs> Why the scripture even teaches us. In the Bible, where Jesus fed the 5,000, not counting women and children, meaning that there's many, many more than just the 5,000 where Jesus took the simplicity of some loaves and fishes, blessed it and broke it. And the world may say, wait a minute, we live in limitation. Jesus, why are you even bothering breaking and blessing these little loaves when there's 5,000 not counting women and children to feed? How ridiculous that you would even think. But Jesus broke with the very understanding that that which I have from a spiritual perspective is abundant. And in this example of breaking bread, breast bread and sharing it and breaking the, uh, the basket and uh, sharing it with others, an abundance rises out to say that there were 12 baskets left over after everyone was fed. Wow. Now, if we live in this kind of mentality where we begin to understand this, where we're letting go of everything from the physical and we're now moving into the spiritual because we know that what? What did we say this morning when we opened up our service? We are spiritual beings having a physical experience. We're spiritual beings having a physical experience. Unfortunately, we often think I'm a physical being trying to have a spiritual experience. We get it wrong. It's the other way around. You are this dynamic soul. You are this revelation of God. You are the essence of the divine. You are called to live out exactly and to the T all that the divine is. That means living out this wonderful God of abundance and expressing it every day in our life, living from that kind of powerful truth. And when we do, that the truth of this abundance that we hold in consciousness, it becomes a revelation all around us constantly. So we begin this year by operating as truth, saying, I operate as truth as what has always been and always what will be. Now the scripture says, you shall know the truth and the truth will set you free. That's true, that's beautiful, that's powerful, that's amazing. When we stop to think, wait a minute, if I really embrace these truths, it's liberating me. It's setting me free from the bondage and the chains that have been holding me back. If I really embrace this truth that always was, that is, and always will be, that God is love and that love is loving me, I'm set free from the chains that may hold me back of a self inability to have self-acceptance and to love who I am. But I'm a creature created of the divine, a divine expression. Oh, that truth is liberating me and setting me free. You shall know the truth and that truth brings about the freedom from any kind of fear and worry and stress. Because let me tell you this, truth, this universal truth, cannot be in alignment with a lie. Truth cannot be in alignment with a lie. Let me give you an example. Truth is, there's a truth that's universal. It says, what you sow, you reap, right? You see this in nature, correct? Everybody sees that, you know, you sow tomato seeds, what do you get, roses? Oh, no, 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 you get tomatoes, don't you? It's a natural law. It's a universal law. It's a truth. It's a spiritual law. Because what you sow, you reap. But unfortunately, people have begun to say, you know what, I maybe could be in agreement, this truth could be in agreement with a lie. Such as, you know, I'm going to sow hate, and I think I'll reap love. I'm going to sow division, and I think I'm going to reap unity. I'm going to try to sow these kind of things that are discord, and I'm hoping that everybody will be in harmony together. I'm going to sow fear, and I'm expecting peace. Well, truth is universal. 
And that truth, no matter where you may go, is what you've sown, that's what you will reap. So it can't be in alignment with Allah. So what happens is people may say, my deception, my way, ability to deceive you is going to produce this wonderful result. Mm, it doesn't. Because truth will not be in agreement with Allah. So if you're telling someone uh, words of fear and you're expecting to bring together people in harmony and peace, it won't happen because the spiritual law is at work and it will not be in alignment or agreement with Allah. For what you truly are is this truth. And to live authentically means that you live in the same vibration as truth. That means the same awareness, the same feeling. You know, every thought has a vibration to it. Do you really understand that? Thought is energy and it's moving throughout the world. And we are surrounded right now in this room by an immense energy. There's an energy of consciousness, an energy of thought going on. And that thought is very creative. And when we begin to embrace this vibration of thought and we come into alignment with it, well, what happens is we're living authentically. Authentically, because we're living aligned with the truth of God that always was, always is, and always will be. And that's who we are. We are living as truth. And when we come into that place, that's when you've reached authentic living in life. To live in this way is to live in one accord. How many of you remember that passage of scripture from Acts chapter two, verse one, that says, and when the day of Pentecost came, and when they were all in one accord. No, that's not a Honda car, I'm sorry, if you've been thinking about that. Uh, it is actually to be in accord. Accord, let's just break down what would it mean to be in a chord? Well, think about music. A chord of music is one. Several notes resounding together in a vibrational frequency that creates a harmony. You see, to be in a chord are these beautiful musical tones that come together and they correspond in vibration with one another. And if we're going to be in accord with the divine, we're going to move our vibration, our thinking into alignment with that which is true, that which resounds through the ages, that which will stand the test of time, that which is eternal. Now, we've gone through the ages in our spiritual life and we've seen gurus and teachers teach fear, and rise, fear rising up within the movements of spiritual traditions and churches and denominations, and then move away. We found people who've been teaching certain things that, you know, just don't have uh, ability to stand the test of time. And yet what we find is when we hold on to truth and we test it and we go deep within to the divine source and say, God, is this the truth? Truth resonates within us and it rises up and it begins to connect all the dots. Things begin to come together beautifully for us. The truth is that all things are working together for good. And I love this because this kind of perspective helps us see that truth is at work at all times in everything. And I don't care what's going on in your world, everything's happening for good. Really, you may say. We've seen some catastrophes, we've seen calamities, we've seen challenges, we've seen all kinds of things happen. You're telling me it happens for good? Well, let me say this. That this past week we saw miracles unfolding as we began the year of 2021. This is a year that really has been a, a powerful message for our lives. Because what we firmly believe in the spiritual truth of love and how it grows and expands is that in that journey, everything unlike love will always rise to the surface for the purpose of healing. So if you're seeing things or experiencing things unlike love, it's rising, it's coming forward. It's coming forward for the purpose of healing. And let me tell you this, until it rises up, you can't heal it. If you keep pushing it down, if you keep suppressing it, saying, I'm not going to deal with this, I don't care about it, I don't, I don't want to listen to it, I don't want to address it, what happens? It stays there, doesn't it? 
But how do we facilitate healing? We allow it to rise up, to come to the surface for the purpose of healing. This week, we saw that ego spoke a belief in lies that rose up and rose up to the surface for us to experience a healing as a community, as a world, as a country. And this rising up, though, was painful, but it was for the purpose to awaken us that we need to begin to heal our nation. Healing begins as we release dis-ease. What is dis-ease? It's when we are uncomfortable, when we are fearful, when we allow anger, when we allow ego to rise up, when we allow these things to come up in our world, when we allow them to be entertained. They're rising up, but they're rising up for a divine purpose. Wow, already in 2021, this is the year of healing. We're seeing things rising up within our nation for the purpose for us to directly address and to see and experience this wonderful healing. And when we unpack the lies that we are meant to live in a world of fears that is suspicious and constantly seeks out division and separates us, when we awaken to this, we can heal it. That's right. When we awaken to it, we can heal it. When we are unpacking, when we are packing the understanding of truth, uh, it is this wonderful thing when we pack it within us, we say this truth is now working in me. It's working through me. It's working around me. It's working for me. I have packed it and this is what I'm carrying for the journey. That in all things, God is working. In all things, God is working for my good. In every experience, no matter what's going on, it may be challenging, but the outcome is a healing that's rising up for us to address, to work through and to heal. But what we have to realize is that we are the creators. We create this world. That's right, we create this world. We create our reality through our thoughts, through the way we're living. If we are living in thoughts of fear and always expressing fear, if we're living in thoughts of suspicion, we're living in thoughts of chaos, if we're living in thoughts of stress and worry, you know what we're doing is creating a world just like that. And we have the power to transform our world as we embrace this wonderful truth, you change your thoughts and you change your world. You change your thinking and you change your world. You change how you look at things and everything around you changes. So what is so important is we understand is that we don't need to repeat history. We need to transform each day. We don't need to keep going in these cycles of repeating history over and over again in our lives and making each day simply a replication of our yesterdays. But what we need to do is transform our moment right here and now and take this truth to heart that we, by changing our very thinking, can be renewing the world and transformation. Be ye renewed by the transformation in your mind. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, says the scriptures. As we renew our thoughts, we are transformed and we transform our day. So let us be packing this as part of our journey and our baggage. We're holding on to this wonderful truth and we have the power to create and to transform. So it's really important that we understand the good that God already is, exists. But if we don't open up our eyes to it and we don't perceive it, well, we'll always live under the veil. That's right. We'll always live under fear. We'll always live under stress. We're always going to live under doubt. We're always going to live under the challenge and the chaos. If we don't stop and lift the veil and begin to see God is doing something amazing right here, right now, in this very moment, in my life, we lift the veil and we begin to see the reality. We begin to see the truth. Years ago, I had the opportunity to travel on vacation to San Francisco. I was really excited to see the Golden Gate Bridge. But the first few days of my vacation over, and we were stood on the shoreline and looked for the bridge. What bridge? There's no bridge. I can't see this bridge. It was all covered in fog. It was like, wait, wait a minute. We came here on vacation to see this, and we can't see it because of the fog that's covering it. So when the weather changed and the fog dissipated, and began to lift, suddenly the grandeur of the Golden Gate Bridge was our revelation. Wow, okay, it is true. It's gorgeous, it's beautiful. You see, 
this is the journey of our life. When we begin to say, I want to lift the veil, the fog, that's over everyday experiences that I'm going through. And all I can see is fear, doubt. And I'm suspicious and wondering and questioning. And I am just uh, looking and seeing a world that is to be afraid of. And so seeing God is doing something amazing right here, right now in my life, in this moment. For everything I'm going through right now is for the purpose of healing. Everything is rising up within our world, within my life, within me for the purpose of healing, for the purpose of me to say, wait a minute, I need to unpack this. I need to open up the suitcase and say, I'm not carrying this in 2021. I'm going to take this out. I don't need this. Here's some stress. I don't need to take that. I'm going to take this fear out. I'm going to take this chaos out. I'm going to take these thoughts of lack and separation. I'm going to remove myself from all these things because I want to move in the journey successfully, liberated, free. So I'm carrying truth in my baggage. Question is, as we travel on our trips, not so much what are we taking, but what are we leaving behind? And let me tell you this, when you found out what you're leaving behind, what's left are the essentials. What's left is what you really, really need. So as we begin this new year and an exciting journey, we're gonna travel together and we're gonna to go to some amazing places in our spiritual life our spiritual journey. I don't know about you, but I'm excited because I've already felt this power of God at working in this world and ex expressing all kinds of miraculous energy that's ready to be unleashed without this year. And it's there for you if you're willing to perceive it, willing to see it, willing to welcome it, lift the veil, let the fog go because it's there. So get ready for an exciting year and let us be people who have packed for a successful journey. Amen.